In Poland, a bitter debate is raging over the issue of sexuality. I will not allow aggressive sex education into our schools. No government can take away our right to sex education and our right to health. The sex education of young Poles is at stake. Sexual minorities are under threat. Homosexuals are often involved in pedophile excesses. At Pride events, there are increasing outbreaks of violence. What we are experiencing is not only a fight for young people, it's about the health and safety of all of us. Warsaw, the winter of 2019. Victoria Korsheva is about to finish school. It's an era which is meant to prepare her for her adult life. For Victoria, this also includes sex education. There is practically no sex education in Poland, and the educational work done by NGOs is about to be banned. This is threatening young people because they simply don't get the knowledge that they need. Victoria lives together with her parents, her 12-year-old sister Olivia, and their dog Kuba in the north of Warsaw. Victoria's mother was the one who told her the facts of life. Sex education in school is optional in Poland and is steeped in the views of the Catholic Church. I remember how contraception methods were taught in school. Guess what was the best method of contraception? The menstrual calendar, of course. 100% effective. Yes, and look how many girls got pregnant in your class. Don't ask, in my high school. Nobody showed us how to put on a condom either, but thank God there were instructions in a packet of Durex. <laughs> Victoria's sister, Olivia, is in the fifth grade and attends the sex education classes organized by the state. The optional subject is called Preparation for Family Life and is offered from the fourth grade upwards. The school books, which are officially allowed, mostly concentrate on the teaching of Catholic sexual values. No masturbation, no homosexuality, and no sex outside of relationships. When someone is driven only by their emotions and sexual desires, then he or she is acting against their own happiness. So that means if you have sex because you enjoy it, you're automatically a bad person and acting against your own happiness? Unbelievable. The teaching book is only about preparation for marriage. And not having sex. I think it's disgraceful. It's not up to anyone else when I'm allowed to have sex. Since the sex education classes didn't have the answers to her questions, she asked for a book which has been creating a stir since it appeared in Poland. Sex Ed PL offers teenagers information on sex that they can't find in the usual school books. Everything is described here, from the structure of a penis to the female body, and all types of contraception. I think it's good that I know these things. Then, when I'm that age, I will be prepared. Since the end of 2019, a draft bill has been discussed in Parliament which will de facto criminalize the sex education of minors. A massive protest is building up against the draft bill. 
Up to now, schools have been able to act on their own initiative and invite NGOs in to give liberal sex education workshops. The law is threatening to overturn this. Supermodel Anja Rubik is on the front line of the demonstrations. No government can take away our right to sex education and our right to health. For many youngsters, the supermodel is an idol. For others, she's a troublemaker. Mariusz Czerżawski started the legal initiative with a petition that's already been signed by over 260,000 Poles. When and whether the law will come into force is not clear. Czerżawski hopes for speedy success because it disturbs him that sex is spoken about so openly in the liberal sex education classes for Poland schools. Sex education has to take place in a safe environment. That's why parents are the best suited to it. Such issues do not belong in school. The father of three set up the foundation Pro Right to Life, a group of radical anti-abortionists. For 20 years, he has fought against anything that could endanger the Catholic nuclear family. His latest enemy is liberal sex education. He wants to outlaw the work of NGOs offering sex education in accordance with WHO standards. These so-called NGOs send young people into our schools and claim that they are working on prevention. But in truth, they are telling the children that masturbation is okay and that sexual intercourse is fine, irrespective of age, as long as the partner agrees. That is like encouraging children to go into prostitution. Dzierżawski's foundation often publishes leaflets condemning the sex education in other EU states. Here, I have a guide for protecting children from pedophiles. We describe the sex education excesses of other countries. Here we have some photos from a sex education book for five-year-olds in Germany. In our brochure, we show the consequences of such sex education. It is that children are exposed to the danger of pedophilia. And this is the sex education the LGBT lobby wants to introduce in our schools. Czerżawski believes that the portrayal of sexual acts in teaching books will drive children into the hands of pedophiles, whom he equates with homosexuals. Czerżin, a village of 1,500 in the east of Poland, is one of around 100 places which have declared themselves an LGBT-free zone since 2019. This is where Alicja Szynkiewicz lives. For a while now, I've felt a kind of aversion towards me, that people don't want to talk to me, that they look away or look at me strangely. When one of her former teachers in the village found out that Alicia was gay, Alicia started getting mail from her regularly. My teacher sent me all these links to Radio Maria, articles and studies about homosexuality. They were always about how you can be healed, that it's a sin and that you're not allowed to live like that. Alicia ignored her teacher's attempts to convert her.
The 19-year-old lives with her parents and two brothers. They didn't want to be filmed or say anything about her coming out. I remember that I cried a lot, although I rarely cry. I tried to tell myself that it's impossible, that I will be straight and just have to wait until it's all over. The first person she told was her mother, whom Alicia is closest to and who supports her in everything, unlike her father and right-wing conservative brother. We avoid the issue like the devil avoids holy water. We can talk about everything, but this part of my life is taboo. Alicia found support in the LGBTQ scene and learned to be open about her sexuality. This can be dangerous. At Gay Pride in Białystok last year, she experienced homophobic hatred at close quarters. I experienced awful trauma in Białystok. When I hear noises from back then, tears come into my eyes and I get a shiver down my spine. It was the first time I experienced such physical violence. Around 800 participants of the Gay Pride Parade were bombarded with stones and fireworks. The police just barely managed to stop things from getting worse. A climate of fear and it isn't just outraged hooligans and nationalists whipping it up, but politicians and the church, too. There are no legal consequences of Chechergin, Alicia's village, being in a so-called LGBT-free zone, but it does mean a targeted exclusion of sexual minorities. In the capital, Warsaw, which has a gay deputy mayor, this would still be unthinkable. Victoria is on her way to a Ponton group conference. When invited into schools, the NGO carries out sex education workshops. But nobody knows how much longer this will still be possible. Victoria has been asked to report from a teenager's perspective. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Activists and sex educators have come to the conference from all over Poland. On stage, Victoria explains why she wants to get involved. The subject has interested me since I was in fourth grade, and I was also shocked at how bad the sex education was. Hello. Victoria's great idol, Anja Rubik, has also flown in from New York. The supermodel published the book Sex Ed PL as an alternative to Poland's school books. On the day after the draft bill was first read in Parliament, the book was number one on the bestseller lists. People panicked because they thought the book would be banned. They ran into the bookshops and bought five, six, seven copies. It's better to have negative PR than none at all. Many, many thanks to all of you. After the panel discussion, the two women talk about their experiences. I can learn a lot from Victoria. When she was speaking on the panel, I was really amazed how smartly and confidently she speaks. It's unbelievable that she is still at school. 
Sex education has a huge influence on our openness. It helps us to understand ourselves and other people better and to stay healthy. I think without sex education, a country cannot be equal and tolerant. Anja Rubik offers Victoria a job in the social media team of her campaign. But if the draft bill comes into force, initiatives like Anja Rubik's Sex Ed PL will struggle in the future. Victoria will also have to find new ways of campaigning for more sex education. Sex educators such as Ola Dulas and Anja Jurek will be directly affected. The two have been offering progressive sex education in schools in Poland's third largest city, Łódź, for 10 years. This could be over soon. This law means that anyone who talks to minors about sexuality could be in danger, because any conversation could be interpreted as persuading the minors to engage in sex. They're not the only ones affected by the law. Psychologists or doctors would be impacted too. If this law comes into force in its current form or an even stricter version, people like us could be threatened with up to three years in prison. For me, personally, that means that I will no longer offer any more sex education to those under 18. Both of the sex educators are getting fewer and fewer inquiries. Many head teachers are already uncertain. But their sex education is available online. They regularly produce videos for their YouTube channel. Okay, let's go. With a greeting, right? Yes. Just say, hello, today we're going to answer all of your questions. Something like that, okay? Welcome to EduSex Q&A video with Anya and Ola. Today is all about vibrators and orgasms. And we're going to talk about female ejaculation. And about love, because since we know a lot about sex, you have your doubts about whether we understand love. Great. Well done. <laughs> For their video, the two of them also carry out a survey in the pedestrian zone of Wuj. Hello, can you tell us what is your definition of love? Do love and sex always belong together? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Sex is an important part of our life, and you can definitely separate the two. Hello, can you tell us, what is your definition of love? This is love. <laughs> and do you think that love and sex always belong together? I think so. Sex is an important part of relationships. And it's better if both parts work well. It's not about loving a man or a woman, but about loving a person. My daughter is very tolerant. Love is for everybody, even when men love men or women love women. Politicians tell us that we are from the backwoods and we shouldn't talk about it or unsettle people with the issue of sexuality. But the average person on the street falls in love, starts a relationship and of course they have sex. And they want to have good sex. I think that we Poles are much less afraid of the issue of sex than people think. Is the majority of the Polish population really more liberal and aware than conservative people like Mariusz Dzierżawski think? He and his fellow campaigners are driving around Polish towns in this van, 
rallying against sex education and the LGBTQ community. I have the impression that our campaign is having an effect. There's less and less resistance and more people are showing their support. There are always some who don't like it. On the van, it says, what does the LGBT lobby want to teach our children? We want to show the parents the truth. What is being trivialized by the mass media is only damaging our children. Here, these quotations on the van show the standards of sex education in Europe. Four-year-olds are being encouraged to masturbate. Six-year-olds to agree to sex. Nine-year-olds are being encouraged to have sex. Polish people have no idea what is really happening. This isn't in the WHO guidelines for sex education that Mariusz Dzierżawski claims to be referring to. In early September, Alicja travels to Chełm with other activists, a small town in the so-called LGBT-free zone. They want to put a stop to the prejudice which prevails there. They want to show people that the LGBTQ community is neither a threat nor abnormal. But the mission is not without danger. Until yesterday I was pretty calm because I didn't think there would be any particular groups who could harm us. But then I spoke to a friend who knows the region well and he said that there is a right-wing group of hooligans in the area who would be sure to seek us out. They are ultra-right-wing hooligans. We are always afraid with everything we do, but it motivates us too. If I weren't afraid, I wouldn't be active. They reach Chelm, and their bus is immediately accompanied by a police escort towards the marketplace. Those are the guys. And are they hot? I don't know, I can only see their noses. <laughs> LGBTQ friendly initiatives are an absolute exception here and only possible with massive police protection. Around 60 police officers will protect Alicia and her group today. This is the best spot for the tables. We always anticipate some kind of counter-demonstration or aggressive reactions. That's why we're in constant contact with the police. Under the skeptical eyes of the local residents, the first curious visitors approach the stand. By talking to the local citizens, the group want to dispel the government's allegations that the LGBTQ community is an attack on Polish values. Their message is that love is love. Can we buy these bags? You can take them with you and carry them with pride. I will use them for shopping. Super, we're really happy about that. In my head, there is always the thought and a sense of guilt that this person could get beaten up later just for carrying my rainbow bag. These things do happen, unfortunately. A lot of young people come to visit the stand. It's brave of them, because especially in small towns, the initiatives are under very close observation three streets away, their actions could be punished. 
I really admire the fact that they have dared to come out and show themselves. LGBT people from these places often don't even know about each other. That's why we come here to encourage them and to give them hope for a better future. So they can have solidarity together. We want to show them that we are everywhere and we are real people too. Most of the residents avoid the camera team. The few who are willing to speak are in support of the initiative. It's ridiculous that there's such a thing as LGBT-free zones. We should be ashamed that such a thing exists. After around four hours, they pack up their stand. You can see how important these campaigns are. Although we are tired, we are motivated to carry on. Victoria has finished all her school leaving exams and moved into her own flat two months ago. Her 13-year-old sister, Olivia, visits her regularly. So are you already thinking about boys and relationships or not yet? I'm still single. But I'm wishing for a perfect boy. Perfect? Not just the first boy who comes along, but one with prospects. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. I'm still too young to have a boyfriend and be making out. <laughs> After her social media job in Anya Rubik's sex education campaign, 18-year-old Victoria has new goals. She wants to go into politics and bring about long-term change in her country. I dream of a Poland where everyone can feel safe, that every person who is growing up is given knowledge about their own body, that everyone knows how to use contraception. But with our government now, that is not going to happen. Things will only change when our generation comes to power, because we have quite different views from our parents and grandparents. Whether the bill against liberal sex education will come into force is still uncertain. Polish youth are hoping that their protests will be a success this time.